This is the first video for section 3.2 on using check digits. In this lecture, I'll be talking about money orders and remainders. So in many ID number systems, one of the digits of the ID number is reserved for checking whether the number is valid or invalid. This extra check digit is not truly a part of the ID number itself, but it needs to be included so that we can check to see if the actual ID number is valid or invalid. So an example of a system that uses this is for US Postal Service money orders. Now, if you don't know, a money order is a secure way to send money that requires money to be paid up front, unlike a written check where only when the check is cashed do you check to see if there's actually enough money in the account. For a money order, you pay up front, so it's considered a secure way to send money. And there's a serial number on every uh, Postal Service money order that includes a check digit. So here's a visual representation of what a money order looks like. So if you've ever gotten a money order, this is what it looks like. And we can actually see that the serial number is on here twice. So it's up here with these red numbers, and it's also written down here in these sort of weird blocky looking numbers. And we're actually gonna talk about those weird looking numbers at the bottom a little bit later in a future section. But we can see here that the serial number is 042 and so on. And this last digit two, that is the check digit. Now it's not really obvious that it's a check digit from looking at this, right? It's not a different color, it's not in a different font or anything like that, but it is a check digit that's used to help verify that these are the valid serial numbers. Okay, so how does the system work? Remember, we always have two pieces of an ID number system. We've got a format that tells us the sort of structure of the number. In this case, a money order serial number is 11 digits long, and that includes a check digit. And then the validation process goes like this. So we add up all of the digits except the check digit. We divide that total by nine and find the remainder, and that remainder should equal the check digit. So we've got a little calculation, a little process that we have to go through, and if that's, that process works out, then our num serial number is valid. So let's try it out with the example that we saw before, 042 and so on. We check that it is 11 digits long, so we just count the digits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, check. So we've got 11 digits, so the format is valid. So what about the actual checking? So what does the system tell us to do? It says add up all of the digits except the check digit. So I'm going to add up these first 10 digits. So 0 plus 2, pl sorry, 0 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1. So I add all that up. Again, have a calculator handy. It makes it a little bit easier. Add all those up, I get 11. So then what am I supposed to do? So then I take that 11 and divide it by 9. So 9 goes into 11 once with a remainder of 2. And if you're freaking out about the division, I'm going to get to that, how we can use the calculator to do this as well. But nine, uh, 11 divided by 9, 9 goes into 1 with the remainder of 2. 2 is my check digit, so 2 matches the remainder, which means this ID number is valid. Okay, so in general, how do we do this? How do we find remainders, right? So if we're not great at long division or we don't remember how to do that, that's okay. We have got these calculators. So the question is, how do we use a calculator to do this? So let's just do a different problem. Let's say that we wanted the remainder when 132 is divided by 7. So, so right now I'm not talking about check digits. I'm just talking about remainders and how do we do remainders kind of as a general question. So 132 divided by 7. So if I grab my calculator and type in 132 divided by 7, I get a weird decimal, right? I get this 18.857 something something. And that doesn't really give me my remainder, right? That just sort of gives me that fraction expressed as a decimal, so which isn't really what I want. Okay, but what that tells us, this 18.857, this says that 7 goes into 132, right? That's what we're doing. 7 is going into 132. 18 times, so the number before the decimal place tells me how many times it goes in, and some change. The fact that I've got some decimal stuff after that, right, means that there's some left over. And again, it's not obvious how many are left over when I have 17 going into 132. But that just means that there's some remainder. And the remainder is what we're getting at, right? The remainder is what we wanna to try to find out. Okay, so 132 can be broken up into a bunch of groups of seven, 18 groups of seven with something left over. So the one we're gonna do on our calculator is figure out what is 18 groups of seven. Well, 18 times seven is 126. So that means that my 132 is 18 groups of seven plus some more. And how many more, that's the question. That's the thing that I'm trying to figure out. So 18 groups of seven on my calculator is 126. 
And so the question is 126 plus how many is going to give me my 132. So I subtract to figure that out. So I take 132 minus 126, and that's going to give me my 6 as my remainder. So 6 is the remainder when I divide 132 by 7. Okay, let's try another one. So let's do 246 divided by 11. Okay, so I'm going to grab my calculator. So 246 divided by 11 on my calculator. I'm just typing in 246, division sign 11, and I hit enter on my calculator. You might have an equal button on your calculator, but whatever actually does the operation, I get 22.363636 and so on. Okay. So we know because there's a decimal part, the fact that there's something here means there is some remainder. But unfortunately, I can't just look at those digits and just see what the remainder would be, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So you, so you can't like look at this three and this six and be like, oh, the remainder is three or uh, the remainder is 36 or something like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So what we have to do instead is again on the calculator, what this is telling us is that 246 is 22 groups of 11 and some more. So what is 22 groups of 11? So I'm gonna do 22 times 11 on my calculator. That's gonna give me 242. So I type that in as well, also on the calculator. So that's almost 246, but it's not quite 246. How much short of 246 am I? I'm gonna subtract. The original 246 minus this thing that I just got, minus 242, again, on my calculator if I need to, is gonna give me four. So four is the answer to the question. So if the question is find the remainder when 246 is divided by 11, the answer here would be four. So you divide on the calculator, you get some weird decimal stuff, you look at the stuff that's in front of the decimal point, you multiply that by the thing that you divided by, and then you subtract that from the original number to get the remainder. So just follow those steps, and that's how we're gonna figure out remainders. And we're gonna need remainders a little bit later as well, so this is a good thing for us to learn now. Okay, so in this video, we learned how remainders can be calculated and be used to verify money order serial numbers. And in the next video, we're going to go back to talking about money orders a bunch in these check digit systems and figure out how do we use this check digit system to find potential errors in our money orders.